questions and answers with Jean Luc Aeon. A Gape Binder, Let Yourself. Part 10. Ekber 14, 2020. Jean Luc. Hello everyone. Introduction by Christina. Translator for Christina. Program of the day, and towards the end of his intervention, to all the participants. On behalf of the organization, I would also like to tell you that it is impossible to answer all the questions we have received, we have a limited time, and also to tell you that there is no criterion for choice other than the order of arrival. There will be questions that could generate translation problems, and we also have difficulty understanding what people mean exactly. But I also think that at that point the questions will not have the way they had in the past. So please accept the circumstances in a gape, in peace, and everything is fine. Often our person demands explanations, but you also know that our heart doesn't need that, it's useless. So again, we're sorry that we cannot answer all the questions, but the important thing here is not what we understand, but the love that we allow ourselves to be, and these are the words that I have to say on behalf of the whole team, words of gratitude for your understanding, kindness, and, above all, the love that you have shared with all of us. I will already start asking Jean Luke a few questions, we will keep the chat active, and if there is something more you want to bring, please do so. Then we'll get started. Question slash answer part, translator. Jean Luke, is this creation perennial in a world of illusion, fear, suffering, could it have been avoided? No, not at all. It had been explained, in 2018 I think. I invite you to look at the sad songs of this year, especially from May until the end of the year, it essentially concerns the very principle of the primary anomaly. The totality of the projection of consciousness, the totality of the dimensional universes of whatever nature bears the imprint of this primary anomaly. All creation, and from the point of view of history, is cyclical. From the point of view of the real of the absolute, all this even represents the nature of creation, the nature of creation is the very nature of consciousness, is inscribed in a form since the anthropomorphism of creation is present up to the 24th dimension. The primary anomaly, because it would take too long to go into details, at the moment of the first emanation of the light of the absolute. Understand that, when I speak of first emanation, I am not speaking of a linear temporal notion, but of an event that is present in all dimensions, in all forms and therefore in all manifestations of what is called consciousness, at the time of this first emanation of light, which is called the source, evidently this memory which is beyond all memories inscribed in this, the veils of the dream, created I remind you from this instant said initial, which are active in each time and in each dimension, were the guarantor if I can say our apparent return to the truth that we never left. Time and space are a total illusion, the primary anomaly consisted simply in creating a first image of the polarized source during this first emanation named source, that is to say with a dichotomy that later became what was called duality. This anomaly was intended to show that all creation, from the absolute that we are, was just a story that was built. That's why it's called a dream, because it's the only analogy we can find. All of this is unfolded and multiplied infinitely, with levels of densities, vibrations, energies, which correspond to the different dimensions. In fact, as everyone knows, the further away we get from the source, the more we are precipitated into levels that I would describe as increasingly dense and increasingly formal, necessarily leading to a process of identification with a form whatever it is, whether we call it our physical body, or the form of a being of light. From this separation, apparent since it is a dream, pain and suffering were created. They were created by themselves by the very forces brought into play by the consciousness in the illusion of time, at certain moments in the notion of cycles, or in a total way including all dimensions and densities, so that they have the possibility to live this collective event, which we can call awakening. We're here on this earth at the heart of all universes. 
we carry the memory, all of us without exception, being supposedly the ultimate level of what has been called the fall. Of course, we carry within us, not only the memories of the ego of this life, the memories of the soul, and especially the memory the first memory prior to form and prior to individuality. This moment must be unique in all universes and in all dimensions. I remind you that everything has been written. Free will is a lure that belongs to the ego and the soul. The truth, the light, the absolute, do not respond to any of these laws, but they are inscribed in the very revelation of the dream. The collective initial moment and the collective final moment, which have been named the Alpha and the Omega, show clearly to those who are awakened, that there is no space, distance, or time between the Alpha and the Omega. It is when you realize this, beyond the intellect, through some form of direct understanding while living it, that is the moment when the first memory that could be said to be a memory, but a memory that occurs in the future, that is to say now, is actually a return to the initial moment that is nothing more than the final moment. In the scenario and script of the creation, it was absolutely necessary that there be this awakening, what we call the natural state, where everything is only joy, where everything is evidence, acceptance and agape. Love can no longer be conditioned, it can no longer be personal, it cannot make a difference in any manifested aspect of consciousness outside of oneself. In fact, what we call awakening, the natural agape state, is nothing more than this form of reminiscence that puts an end to time, that shows us that we are all spaces, all forms and the totality of the dream. These are very weak words that try to make us apprehend what can be neither defined nor limited. It is a state as we say joy, a state of evidence, which is based on nothing else than the state itself, which is exclusively perceptible and livable in the eternal present. A voice outside makes them pause and smile. Translator. Can we continue? Yes. What are they selling out there? Answer from Christina slash incomprehensible translator, but laughter. Translator. It's a sequence of the other, this question. Before, we were in time zero. So why did we have to write this script? How did we have to write it? I'm not sure I understood the meaning of the question. Translator. Before, we were in time zero. So why did we have to write this script? The script was not written in time zero, because in time zero there is total felicity. The script was written from the emanation of the one consciousness, from the first form, which is the source. The first image of the source, which was Metatron, bears the primary anomaly. There is therefore a fragmentation, a descending and ascending generation, since the emanation of the Absolute. What I am saying here can be found in all primordial traditions. If you look as well, for example, I took the example of the Chinese, Taoism, if you look at the Gnostics, for example, they tell you that the creators of this world are demons, psychotics, madmen. This is the nature of creation, which does not mean that we should reject creation, because there is an enormous amount of beauty, it is the intelligence of light, it is the infinity of forms and consciousness. It is a question of seeing clearly, otherwise you risk entering into the denial of life, whereas on the contrary, it is the acceptance of life, the acceptance of who you're at this moment, which literally screeds freedom and agape. You have two neuromediators or two hormones that are deeply elevated in the blood and the agape state. The most important is oxytocin which is the hormone of happiness, the hormone of joy. When you take someone in your arms, without any sexual connotation of possession, you secrete oxytocin. When a mother breastfeeds her child, there is also a secretion of oxytocin. The second, which also corresponds to this awakening to the natural state, is a hormone that is secreted by the pituitary gland, the famous third eye, called epiphysine. It has been shown that in cases of true awakening, through functional imaging, where we clearly see an edema in the areas of the motor sensory cortex, what we called at the time the image starts. 
This edema is systematically found on MRI, magnetic resonance imaging, in a human being who is awake, and blood tests show at that time a significant secretion of the two hormones I have just mentioned. Oxytocin is the hormone, is the neurometer of what I named two days ago in neuroscience the very foundation of the expression of cooperation, persistence and transcendence. Epiphysine, on the other hand, will modify sleep cycles, and a whole host of time-related regulations, in particular on physiological needs of all kinds, whether it be sexuality, whether it be food, all these craniobiological data, of attraction also at all levels, are amplified by epiphysine. Of course, the natural state, which I will talk about this afternoon, has extremely precise markers at the neuroscientific, physiological, anatomical, behavioral, psychological level, in particular activating spiritual potentials, these potentials being named by the names of the stars around the head. A small precision at this level, when we spoke of the 12 stars of Mary, the stars of the head, they are located at very precise places in relation to the external skull, but especially at the central neurological level, these 12 stars around the head are in fact all located on the forehead, not energetically, nor vibratorily, but in the prefrontal cortex, that is to say the gray matter. Translator. Cut. I didn't hear. They are located, yes, yes, I was saying, these 12 stars that were energetically located around the head, are coded, recapitulated, between the two zones here, on the forehead, on what is called the prefrontal cortex, which are the summit of cognition, which are not the place where the feeling of being an individual is located, which is linked, I remind you, to the rectal and brain. These 12 spiritual potentials, I'm not going to mention them again, but perhaps I will take two or three examples. The two most external ones are clarity and precision, good and evil does not change places, attraction and repulsion if you like, and, of course, you have other stars. I'll take another example, the star Theres carries a virtue depth, which is connected with the door that is located in the left iliac fessa, the fold of the left groin, and depth is simply the ability to enter into what is deep, into what is intimate and truthful. Kira's T, which I remind you was the star located behind the head on the left side, corresponds to the Christic state, etc., etc., I refer you to the history for that. The question was what? Laughter. Translator. Ah, uh, the question was, since we're already in time zero, why did we write the script? That was it. We didn't write the script, everything happened spontaneously, as Biddy said, life appeared, the universes appeared, by the intelligence of light. What appeared will necessarily disappear, because everything is cyclical on a time scale that has nothing to do with human life. At this very moment, you have countless galaxies that are being reabsorbed by black holes, which is the case I remind you in our solar system, by the arrival of dead stars in a black hole and, with the alignment that will occur with the galactic center Sagittarius A, where the mystery is, in the etymological sense. If you want the analogy, it would be the womb of the goddess the place of the alchemy of creation, the womb of the woman. I'm going to stop there, otherwise I'm going to deviate too much. That's the main thing I wanted to tell you. Translator. So let's continue. I balance between two states, on the one hand peace, joy, lightness with an almost permanent smile, and on the other hand a state of fatigue, lack of interest, and therefore joy for any project that doesn't exist. Is this swaying a lack of stability in the heart? Not at all. Absolutely not. It is the case for everyone. The observer sees this suffering character in this world and at the same time lives the truth of a gape. It's called the face to face, that's what you have to go through, and is to disgust you forever to be subjected to the dream or to believe in the dream. The dream is not strictly speaking destroyed, it is not of destruction, except for the ego, except for the soul. On the other hand, 
for the spirit, for the real, that which has never really appeared cannot disappear. In the logic of the event, when the solar system, our solar system, is aligned with Sagittarius A, then, as Nostradamus said, the arrow of Sagittarius will be shot, fired, and that is the event. This is the association of the galactic flash with the solar flash, and also the flash of our heart, the famous white paradise, so that as many brothers and sisters as possible, at the moment of the event of the famous white paradise, we can receive and cushion the unfolding of the truth. It is quite logical, even when you're in a stabilized agape state if I may say so, to see your own character, the last habits, the last attachments, the last beliefs, to the point of nausea, to the point of nightmare. There's a rule that was given many years ago in the course of events that we live through, the more the chaos will grow, the more you'll be in joy. And the bad boys, with their installation of the new world order, participate in the same truth. Only they don't know it, because they don't have a clear vision, and they haven't experienced what creation is. JLA smile. That's why it's something that makes me smile inside. The more chaos grows, on the screen of the world or in our own life, even if it has to go through great suffering, through illness, through loss, it has only one goal, whatever your feelings and perceptions, to make you realize, to make you realize that you're only joy. This superimposition is sometimes painful, comes to disturb the perception of yourself, comes to question you lie at the question that is asked, but it is the normal process. The more you let go of your pretensions to believe you're a separate individual, the more you let go, turns off. Oh there's a cut. Translator. Yes, and we can't see you. No, it throws me out of the system all the time. So, is it going to hold there? I can hear you, can you hear me? I'm not on Wi-Fi, I'm on 4G, and it's true that 4G all over the world, it's very fluctuating. I shouldn't be long before I get there. Translator. Oh, here we go. No, the image is fixed. Well, you don't need to see my face, we'll keep going anyway, it'll come back eventually. Where was I at? Translator. Yes, the problem is that, we zap afterwards, we start talking and fun it, here we go. But I think you've already said the gist of it, if I may say so. Yes, yes, that was the end of my intervention on the question. Translator. She still has a question that is a continuity to the one before. Once we wake up, do we still have interest, or join creating something? But we are creators, just don't be trapped by goals or objectives, and your creation should not come from a projection into the future, but adapted to the present instant. At that moment the intelligence of light, the fluidity of unity, will naturally lead you to express your full potential. Everything will be easy. Do not worry about the event to adapt your behavior. It is not a question of doing survivalism or to protect yourself, to protect yourself from anything. At that moment you're even more available for life and its creativity, provided that you're in the present, not in memories and projections. In other words creativity, projects are realized in the instant, by your availability, and less and less by your will or your decisions. Let things come to you. The major pitfall, the major problem is here, we want to direct our life, and, as long as we believe we're directing our life, we're not available for life or for the real. Another question. Christino's intervention, addressed to all the participants, was essentially about work and companies, which is our field of intervention. 30 minutes, translator. Jean Luc, have you left? No, no, I'm listening carefully. Translator. Your turn. Compared to the company, which is not my field, but I have created many technological systems to support business leaders, I have created grids and technologies that specifically address what I call the emotional intelligence of groups, because there's a double dynamic. 
Well I think Christina is aware, of course, there's this individual dynamic of the agape state, but there is also the group dynamic and group coaching or the management of the leaders themselves, which this time is the agape resonance, or as Christina used to say, the collaborators, the team, must be part of this agape resonance whose key words are cooperation and benevolence. This is a far cry from the old corporate world, and whatever the collective event, the companies, which are in quantity, which have not seen this necessity, which is indeed a grave change, and we all know that in companies resistance to change is something essential, and therefore cooperation in this particular management of teams is very important. Competition has been replaced by the acceptance that the solution is there. If you have won or if you have been made to win within yourself, something that is fundamental, which is resistance to change. The habit, the lack of creativity means the death of a company. These are the few words I wanted to add on the entrepreneurial side. Christino's intervention addressed to all the participants. Translator for Christina. Jean Luc, I don't understand what's going on. I think it's Biddy doing this to Jean Luc. Materialize Jean Luc. There is only Jean Luc's voice, but no image. I'm there, without form. Translator, I have a question I've received from several people. OMA said that he was thinking of intervening much less. Can you explain exactly what that means? It simply means that today, there are countless people, even me, who are interested in what the speakers tell us, but at some point there is something essential. It's autonomy, but also the freedom not to depend on absolutely nothing that could be considered outside opinion. It takes the pedagogical process of empowerment, in the same way that for the last two years, at least in what I'm proposing, there is a form of withdrawal from all the archetypes, even the most prestigious ones. Buddha said, one can say it for Christ too, Buddhism says, when you meet Buddha, kill him. We must put an end in this to the distance, to the appearance of separation. The ultimate stage in the appearance, as Christina said of being, is empowerment. Empowerment is about strengthening benevolence and cooperation, it has nothing to do with the old criteria in business that we used to call trust, willpower. The most important thing, to arrive at this ineffable conclusion of lived experience, there is no one, and all those I can see, all the entities I can hear in this earthly plane, are concretely myself, not a part of me, but all me inside, without any exception. And there you live agape, the ineffable joy, and indeed that inner tranquility where the creative act of life manifests itself especially during these particular times. That's where you find resilience, autonomy, and in entrepreneurial terms, I won't talk about competitiveness or competition, but it does indeed join with cooperation, with benevolence. Whatever the time, whether it's a month, a year, a day, we're not laying in what Christina exposed or what I can expose the foundations of a better world or a better society, but simply the effectiveness of this cooperation in the present moment, in the individual, in a group of leaders. And that's it, and I'll end with these words, that's what Biddy said last year, bring a gate into companies. But of course, the company must be attracted with sugars, with honey, and for a company, whether we like it or not, for the moment still, it is the excellence of performance and profit. All that is changing. Independently of the collective event, it is also an awareness of the real. So, on that note, I will wish you bon appétit. Translator for Christina. Bon appétit. At 3 o'clock in Portugal and at 4 o'clock in France and hoping that Jean Luc materializes again. Yes, well listen, I don't know what happened, we'll see and if it happens, I'll change the material. Well, bon appétit and see you later. Through Jean Luc A1. Less transformations. English translation. LMF.